Hey class, this is Juan Ramirez with EE2715, that's Linear Circuits 2, Transients. Today we'll cover the step response of a series RLC circuit, which is section 8.5 um, within chapter 8 second order circuits. So you may recall that we analyzed an RLC circuit that had its RLC components in series with each other, that is sharing the same uh, inductor current, and um, it had some initial inductor current and capacitor voltage somehow. Uh, it, it acquired that initial uh, value, initial condition. Now we're going to do a similar analysis, but analyze it looking at um, having a step input. So instead of seeing how they discharge, uh, they may be charging um, because of this step input. So the response is a little bit different. Uh, we'll find that it's actually not that much more different. So let's start off with it. All right, so the circuit looks a lot like the one we were looking at before except we have an input Vs. That input closes at time zero, which simulates the actual step response or step input. Okay, so this is the circuit that we're analyzing. And let's now do KVL around the loop. Okay, so these are all the voltage drops. On the right side and then on the left side you have the voltage rise which is the step input um, let's recall that because the capacitor is in series with the inductor they share the same current and the current of a capacitor is equal to c dv dt Next, we will sort of substitute IC, the capacitor current, which is the same as the inductor current. We'll substitute it with um, C dV dt, and then we'll simplify, um, and we'll end up with the following function. Okay, so this is our characteristic equation. Um, and now notice that it's in terms of the capacitor voltage, not the inductor current. So that's the difference between the, um, you know, how we're analyzing the step response of the RLC circuit with a step input uh, versus a source-free series RLC circuit. Um, we're, we're looking at different values at this point we can still find the uh, inductor current like we did for the source free series RLC circuit. And um, the inductor current is actually quite easy to find because it's equal to the capacitor current. And to do that, once you have the capacitor voltage, you just take the derivative of that capacitor voltage, multiply it by capacitance, and then you have your capacitor current, which is I of T.
Okay, um, <clears throat> so we can tell that this response looks a lot like what we were seeing before, except on the right it has Vs over LC. So the solution to this second order differential equation has two components. One is the transient component, which is what we analyzed in the source-free series RLC circuit, section 8.3. And the other is this steady state. You may recall that in chapter 7 for first order systems, um, we, I kind of said that there are three components. And that's not wrong. Um, there's the transient component, the steady state component, which is what we call the final component. Um, there's also the initial component. So there is what happened long before the transition. That's the initial component. What happened during the transition? That's a transient. What happened a long time after the transition? That's a steady state. So those are three components. Why are we saying it has two though? Well, it's because the way we've been analyzing the transients for second order systems, we are taking into account the initial conditions, which you may recall in chapter, uh, and yeah, in sections 8.3 and 4, with all of our analysis problems, we've been solving for I of zero right after that transition, um, or the rate of change of inductor current right after the transition or capacitor voltage right after transition, etc. We've been looking for those initial conditions. So that transient kind of includes the initial condition within that expression. I'll make a note here. Okay, and what, what does the solution look like? Well, in a very general sense, this is what the capacitor voltage solution looks like. Oh. Okay, so it's a transient response plus the steady state response separately. Or sort of independently. Um, and in the circuit above, and maybe to kind of emphasize this a little bit, I'm going to say. VSS of T is equal to V infinity always. Let me redraw this real quick. Sorry about that. This is always true. And then the circuit above. the steady state voltage across the capacitor is going to be equal to the step input. Okay, so that's good to clarify. Um, so, now let's take a look at the solution for the different response types. Okay, again we have the same three response types, which are overdamped, critically damped, and underdamped. And the response is very similar. <clears throat> 
except now you're going to add a steady state um, value to it. Okay, so all equations we've seen before with the exception of um, adding that Vs component or the steady state component. All right, so the Vs is for a particular circuit we're analyzing above this circuit here where Vs is the actual step response. Um, this is sort of the most simple uh, or basic series RLC circuit with a step input that you could have. Um, for circuits that are more complex than that, the steady state value might not be Vs. It might be something different. So you'll require some circuit analysis to make that determination. Um, let's add a note here real quick. we want to turn off all the sources to find transient response type. So now, um, if we look, for example, at the, at the circuit that we're analyzing above, it has uh, actual voltage um, applied to the circuit at T equals zero plus, right after the transition. You want to actually turn off that source to determine what is your series resistance, series inductance, series capacitance. Um, and we'll find that we do a similar thing for the parallel RLC circuit with a step input. Okay, so remember, turn off the sources and if, um, or, or just a refresher, to turn off a voltage source, we replace it with a short circuit. To turn off a current source, we replace it with an open circuit. That's just a reminder. Okay, so the complete response for any variable All right, transient response plus the steady state response. And we'll just add the fact that the steady state response will always be this guy here, equal to the final value. Okay, now let's do an example. So we're going to look for the voltage across the capacitor for time greater than zero. And this is the circuit that we have. 
Okay, so this is what we have, and we have a switch that um, is initially connected to the 12 volt source and then connects to the 8 volt source at time zero. And our assumption is that these switches switch instantaneously. In practice, a mechanical switch is not instantaneous. Um, it takes time for the contact to go from one position to the other. But, uh, but here we're assuming ideal conditions. Okay, so again, we kind of follow the same steps that we've been following. So the first thing is to determine what the damping factor is and the natural frequency. To do that, let's now kind of get into the habit of identifying if they're a series RLC or a parallel RLC. So here I'm going to say it's a series RLC. Because it's clear that right after the transition, the resistance, the inductor, and the capacitor are in series with each other. Um, okay. So what is our alpha value? So is it clear to us what R, L, and C are? Here it's pretty straightforward. After the transition, your circuit consists of four elements, the 8-volt source, 10-ohm resistor, 0.1 Henry uh, inductor, 50 millifarad capacitor. Um, because of that, there's only one R, one L, one C, so we know what those values are. Because it's a series RLC, alpha is still equal to, to, um, to R over 2L. Okay, which is 50 nepers per second. Resonant frequency equation doesn't change. It's 1 over square root of LC. That's the same for series and parallel RLC. Okay, and we end up with 14.14 radians per second. And we can tell from here that alpha is greater than omega naught. Therefore, the response is um, overdamped. Sorry. Okay, so now we can find our roots, characteristic roots, S1 and S2. It's going to be negative alpha plus square root of alpha squared minus omega naught squared. And that gives us negative 2.04. Um, the second root is the same thing, but with a minus in between the alpha and the square root. And that'll give us negative 97.96. Now we're going to find those initial conditions. And so now we're looking at capacitor voltage. So we want to look for the uh, capacitor voltage right after the transition and the rate of change of that capacitor voltage. And from the previous couple of sections, we realize that even though we care about capacitor voltage, usually the inductor current right after the transition also allows us to help, or sorry, also helps us to analyze and determine the rate of change of the capacitor voltage right after the transition. So we usually find that as well. Um, we don't technically need it for um, determining the final response, but it helps.
Okay, so for the initial value, we assume steady state conditions, which means that an inductor is replaced with a short, a capacitor is replaced with an open, Okay, and then by inspection, there's an open circuit in series with the inductor, so um, you can tell that no current will flow through that by inspection. And then the capacitor voltage will be all of it. Since there's no current flowing, there's no voltage drop on the resistor, and we know there's no voltage drop on the short. So according to KVL, all the voltage will be across that capacitor open circuit. And it's equal to positive 12 volts. Now we're, let's take a look at the circuit right after the transition. Right after the transition, we have an 8 volt source instead. And because we haven't reached steady state conditions, we actually have to uh, consider our capacitor and inductor as a capacitor and an inductor, not a short circuit, or rather an open circuit and a short circuit. Okay, so we know from what we just found that I of zero plus is zero. We need to know IC. We also know the initial capacitor voltage. Um, we're looking for the rate of change of capacitor voltage, which is equal to IC over C. But IC is equal to I of zero plus, which is equal to zero, so the rate of change of capacitor voltage is zero. In this section, pretty much the only new thing is the fact that we're now adding the final value. So instead of only calculating the initial conditions, we also add the step to calculate the steady state value. And the way we actually calculate that is similar to um, how we would calculate it in chapter 7, which is you analyze the circuit in the final state. But now you replace inductors with a short and capacitors with an open. And if you want for kicks, you could also look for the final inductor current. And by inspection, the inductor current is zero because it's in series with an open circuit. And the capacitor gets all the voltage, 8 volts. So pretty straightforward. Now, the mathy stuff. Now we plug in everything we know into the voltage equation, and we plug in our initial conditions to actually solve for those coefficients. Okay, so we recall that this is an overdamped uh, response. Because it's overdamped, I am going to say that my capacitor voltage must look like this um, VT plus VSS of T. I mean, that's always what it's going to be, but because it's overdamped, that will look like this. All right, so now let's go ahead and plug in our values, which are to the S1T, which is negative 2. 
I'm going to say 2, not 2.04, just to kind of simplify our math here. Um, plus a2, e to the negative 98, plus 8. Okay, now let's plug in our initial condition. Initial capacitor voltage, we said, was 12 volts. Let's plug in 0 for every value of time. So we end up with A1 plus A2 is equal to, sorry, 4, can't do math, uh, 12 minus 8. Okay, now let's take the rate of change of the voltage, so that's the VDT. First we calculate it generally, uh, so the capacitor voltage is right over here, where I put the star, funny looking star, less funny looking. Uh, we take the rate of change, so that looks like this. And uh, 8 is the constant, the rate of change, or the derivative of it is 0. Okay, so now let's plug in our initial condition, which is rate of change of capacitor right after the transition. We said... Uh, or calculated it to be zero. So now let's plug in zero for every value of time and set that equal to zero. All right. So that gives us negative two a one minus ninety eight a two equal to zero. That's your second equation. So our first equation, I'll rewrite as A1 equal to A, sorry, negative A2 plus 4. Our second equation then, once we plug in 1 into it, will be negative 2 times negative A2 plus 4 minus 98 A2. And that's all equal to zero. So what do we get? We get 2A2 minus 8 minus 98A2 equal to zero. Uh, so 2 minus 98 um, will give us like, I don't know, negative 96. And then we move 8 to the other side. A2 comes out to be 8 over 96, 1 over 12. Um, and then we plug that bad boy into a calculator. Point zero eight three. Negative. All right, now we plug in the value of, or sorry, we plug in the value of A2 to find A1. And that'll give us, uh, so negative, negative, so positive 0 0.083 plus 4, so 4 0.083. And we could plug that into our capacitor voltage equation. And this is what we get. That's our capacitor voltage. And that's what the step input does to the response. It really just kind of adds a steady state value um, and changes the way we do circuit analysis a little bit. Um, but that's about it. So uh, again, encourage you guys to check out the book, review it.
Um, do some of the examples in there and reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.